Assalamualaikum. Selamat sore. Good afternoon, Prof. Buhari M. Yamin. Ya, good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ani. Ya, yeah, thank you, Prof. For, uh, once again with anikusrini.com for sharing your knowledge and your time with us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm Dr. Enikus Rini. We have a speaker, Professor Emeritus Dr. Buhari M. Yamin. He is from University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Don't miss this interview, which can, uh, can change your mindset and make you become a leader or teacher or lecturer in the future. Don't forget to subscribe. Like and share this video, learning new skill, connect to the world, and become a global citizen with anikusrini.com. Okay, we want to continue our discussion about Al-Quran, earth, rock, mineral, element, atom, to uh, understand about element. So our student or our colleague or community or people can understand Uh, what is rock? What is element? Is it right, Prof? Yeah. Okay, so I want okay. to share uh, our slide, Prof. So you can present yeah. that thing, this slide. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay, can you see this slide? Yeah, I can see now. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes. Can start, Prof? Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Ani. Yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening. Waalaikumsalam. And this afternoon we will be, we will, we will continue to discuss about the formation of earth and rock, minerals, and leading to element that we have discussed in the previous uh, video. Yes. And this time I will elaborate elaborate more so that we can see the, the connections and looking from the Al-Quran. Don't forget, Al-Quran has been studied by Islamic scholars and also non-Muslim scholars. And remember, Al-Quran is uh, created or produced almost 1,600 years ago. Okay, now from our previous video, God said in the Quran how the earth was formed. The earth was formed in one piece, one piece. And the God Allah said, go and study. Okay, go and study. Yes. The formation of the earth. So that instruction was very well taken by, by human, by many scientists to study about the earth formation. Yes. So let me see the, the first slide. Okay. Uh, the, yeah, let's see the first slide. Okay. The first slide in the Al-Quran, Surah 39, verse 5, it is about the earth. Okay. Allah created the heavens and the earth in truth. He overlapped night over the day and overlapped the day over the night and the sun and the moon all move to a pre-recorded destiny and you do not exalt it and God is very forgiver. So it is mentioned in the Quran, created the earth. So in the previous one, we said created the earth in one piece, go and study. Okay, let's have a look at the world map now. Ernie, next slide. Okay. So, Next slide, if you look at the world map, now with the technology, we can see the earth. This is all, almost all the pictures in our discussion today taken from the internet. So you can go uh, to Google and look at the internet. There are so many images provided, okay? You can see the earth from the outer space in the first picture. And you see, this is the world, the earth. So the earth was initially one piece, not like this one. So the geology has studied about the earth formation. 
and they came up with a theory called plate tectonic theory, where the Earth is split into you know, North America, South Africa, yes. Africa, Central Asia, and ASEAN. It is a plate tectonic theory. So if you bring South Africa close to this area, you can assemble them into one piece, okay? So yeah. this is called by the geologist plate tectonic theory. With the information technology, they can get a better picture of the Earth looking from the outer space. Okay, so this is the Earth, okay? Now, People have studied about the Earth, the, the splitting of this one piece of Earth into many, many continents, many, many countries. So we go and look at the rock. So next slide, Ernie. So next slide will show you the landscape. So I've shown you the landscape of Saudi Arabia where Quran was revealed. Quran was ori originally was originated. So this is a landscape, the surface of the earth in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia at one time there was nothing. It's a fully desert. So many rocky rocky mountains, oases where there are water there. This is Saudi. Okay. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the land is really desert, really rocky, okay? Nothing. But Rasulullah has left them Makkah and Medina, where the whole Muslim, Muslim entire world come down to Makkah and Medina. That will give money to Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia financial situation was depending on the pilgrimage Umrah to Mecca and Medina. At that time, no oil, okay? Yes. But later on, they discovered oil. So oil was a big event. So many countries, America, England, Spain, have great influence on Saudi Arabia because of the oil. So because of the oil, Saudi became very rich. And now the landscape of Saudi has changed dramatically. OK, you see next slide. See the next slide, we see how the Saudi Arabia today, you see that? Yes, so you it's very all beautiful. The, all, all building, Masjid Haram in, in Mecca. Mecca. Okay. And top building and top building. You can see behind there, there are still few more. Yes. Rocky and rock surface, you know? Yes. So Saudi yes. Arabia has changed dramatically due to oil and also pilgrimage. So the pilgrimage of Muslim to Saudi Arabia, even Disneyland in California, cannot compete with the Makkah in Medina. Okay, this is Saudi. The earth, see the development on the surface of the earth. Okay, we see other country as well. Next slide. Now next slide will show you. Malaysia. Malaysia. Uh, see, we'll the, come landscape, home. <laughs> the natural landscape of Malaysia. So Malaysia is very close to Indonesia and Philippines. So we also have a beautiful sea view with the island, with the high hill here, Cameron Highland, nice river. And also Malaysia, Indonesia are tropical countries. We are rich in flora and fauna compared to Saudi Arabia, okay? Yes. Tropical country, in a very rich in flora and fauna. So next slide. Malaysia also like Saudi has undergone development. So you can see, this is Langkawi. Yeah. This is Kuala Lumpur, yeah. the Twin Towers. Yes. So many, many countries now try to build up tall building, okay? Tall building, uh, attractive building. So, Everywhere you now, people uh, with money are able to develop their country and build more tall buildings. Okay, now let's see 
Indonesia. Still, we are talking about the Earth, yeah. Yes. Okay, Indonesia also. Next slide. Also, uh, this is a map of Indonesia. Yes. This is the Sumatra, the Java, the Kalimantan, the Sulawesi. So Indonesia has got so many islands. See so many islands, and of course volcanoes. You can see here also volcanic activity, beautiful, and also Indonesia have a beautiful landscape, many many islands. Okay. Thank you, bro. So, <laughs> Indonesia also uh, now developing very very fast. We can see next slide. Okay. Indonesia also now, you can see Bali. here is in Aceh, <laughs> this is in Aceh. This is Nusa Penida in Aceh. Bali. Yeah, and this is Jakarta, I think. Okay. You can see a tall building coming up. And now the Indonesian is moving their capital from Jakarta to Kalimantan. So Indonesia also is developing uh, very, very fast. For the last five years or so, okay. Yes. So you can see now from the one piece into many continents, and from twenty years ago landscape with the present landscape, okay. Yes. Now that we see at the rock, at the rock formation of the earth surface. The okay, next slide. Next slide. I will show you. Uh, because uh, these are the rock. Uh, I'm talking about the rock now. So yeah. if you go to see the world, you see there are many, many types of rocks. Yes. Some rock. This is not a pattern of the it's rock. It's very beautiful rock. Yeah, so this yeah. is the rock in the sea. Now all this, this rock, over time, will undergo some changes. Yes. Due to weather, weather, weathering effect, yeah. chemical yeah. effect, erosion, etc., etc., the rock undergo uh, very significant changes. Sometimes <coughs> earthquake took place, the landslide occur. In geological term, they call it fault. Uh, some part of the land being pushed down, one being pushed up. Something appear from the sea, okay. So, so many types of rock formation undergo undergo changes from time to time, okay. Yes, bro. And that what make the plate tectonic theory, where now more waters, more sea occupying the surface of the earth. All right. Right. Now on my right is a typical rock, okay, called igneous rock. So the geologists study about the rock in the earth. And when they study about the rocks, they study what are the constituents, what are the components in the rock. And the rocks are different from other rocks. By studying the components, from there they can name the rock. So if the rock rich in certain element, quartz, silica, they call it igneous rock. So this is igneous rock. So igneous rock normally come from the from the volcanic activity. Okay. Okay. Some rocks uh, undergo chemical changes. Okay, weathering, leaching, raining. Yeah. Water from the sea, they change. Then that is called metamorphic rock. Okay. Yes. There are some rocks are broken to small pieces, and the rocks settle down, settle down in the water, in the marine environment. They became sediment. Even eventually the sediment are packed together at the bottom, become a rock, but they are called Sandy sedimentary rock. Okay. Okay. So this is igneous rock. Okay. So many types of rock. The geology are very good. They study about the earth. Okay. We see next time. Next time we will see uh, when you have rocks. Okay. The rock normally classify 
or given their name according to the mineral present in the rock. First, what is mineral? All right. Uh, mineral is normally uh, is a framework of inorganic compound, metallic compound. Therefore, mineral. Mineral normally have shape. This is typical shape of quartz. Uh, so the quartz have shape. This is blue color. Then this is a mineral quartz. Why? On the top of the quartz, there are another mineral. This is mineral called tourmaline. Have colored. These are some some specimen of minerals. These are also mineral. You see the shape is here is cubic. So the geologists uh, include the chemists also create a field called mineralogy. So from the rock, they, they remove the rock, they break the rock, and get the mineral from the rock. Okay? Yes, bro. So what students, when they learn, not only from the book, what the book is saying, but we can see now from the earth, the rock, from the rock is a mineral. From the minerals, we know mineral is that is made of a metallic framework crystal. Okay. Yes. So from from organic from volcanic eruption, all this lava when they flow in melting stage, the one that solidify first will give you crystal very fast, small size. The one that melting very very low melting point but high temperature will travel longer that will give you bigger crystal okay yes so in the process of crystallization there will be so many mineral associated and form the rock so the rock is named based on the mineral content so then we study the mineral we study the mineral identify the mineral and identify the elements in the minerals. So again, you can see the sequence, the earth, the rock, the minerals, and the elements in the mineral. Okay? Yeah. So we go to the next slide. Now we are talking about the elements. Okay. This is again another rock, another mineral. You can see this is not a beautiful mineral. This you can see blue mineral formed form together or associated with another mineral to form a rock. This is almost a single mineral in a rock. You can see there a blue mineral together with other mineral. And here you can see this mineral have hexagonal shape okay okay so you have no mineral like metallic uh, resonance glassy mineral like quartz so there are thousand thousand shape uh, property kind of mineral so mineral is a big topic mineral is a good business okay uh, yes i so, agree with that yeah that is like mineral from mineral can think Jewelry, etc., etc., yeah. and the price is very, very good price. Okay, very so expensive. Still talking, about the, uh, it's still talking about the minerals, so we now go to the elements that make the mineral. Okay, okay. now we go to the next slide. Next slide. Yes. You see the next slide. I mentioned last time the four element mentioned in the Quran. Yeah. Water, air, earth. Another one is soil fire. So fire. Yeah. Uh, soil is earth. Yeah, earth, okay. Earth. <laughs> yes. One more is fire. So again, it's all mentioned in the Quran. Okay. It yeah. started from there. And then the earth. Okay. So don't forget when we learn chemistry, we learn element from Quranic approach, is all there mentioned. Okay. So next slide. Uh, now we are going to elements. We refer to the next slide. Okay. We 
the what are the elements mentioned in the Quran? Yes. So as I said, Quran is 1,200 years ago. So in the Quran, the element mentioned are iron, iron, copper, copper, silver, silver and gold. And gold. Okay, these are very very important element in life. Yes. In, in the body, in everyday life. And the rest, you go and study. Like God says, you study the affirmation. But God, God gives you some hint. The important elements are iron, copper, silver, and gold. Gold. Okay? Okay. So Quran has given a good, good start, good starting point about the elements. Okay? So next slide. So the scholar have studied this in Quran in detail. God mentioned silver seven times in the Quran. Seven times he mentioned. Beautiful, beautified for people. This element, good for people. Love which they desire. Of woman and son, keep up up son and for gold and silver. And find branded horses, cattle, and title land. This is the enjoyment of the worldly life where Allah has with him the best return. There are seven times in the Quran mentioned about silver. What that for much in Arabic? Okay, next slide. So silver is animal. And now we know that these elements are Quranic elements because they are mentioned in the Quran. Let me go back to our our soil, our land that we can use as a good example to learn. So people have seen activities in our country. One mining activity is about bauxite. Ernie tahu bauxite? I know that bauxite. I use yeah. low grade uh, bauxite, Prof. Okay. As for research. But nobody knows. Not many people know yes. what exactly in the, the mineral in the bauxite. In bauxite. Okay. Yeah. Bauxite is a rock unlike igneous rock, unlike metamorphic rock, it is a sedimentary rock. Rock that has been broken and by sedimentation from the earth, from the soil. And that is why the rock is soft because it is sedimentary rock. Okay? Okay. So you can find it in open mining. Okay? In Malaysia, in the palm oil plantation area. In Indonesia, well, you can see here. Uh, uh, Bintan Island. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know exactly where it is, but you can see there are many plants, may not be real jungle, yeah. but accessible to the people. So when you see this red, people might think it is iron. So bauxite, the major element is silicon. Okay? Yes. So public do not know when a contractor, a miner, miner, the mining industry, yes, the mining people, what is the agreement between the mining company? with the government. Is it about bauxite? Is it about silicon? Is it about other elements? So normally the government has to study what are the elements in the bauxite. So one story I like to tell in Sabah, yes. they call it Copper mine, copper mine, Tuaran copper mine. So the agreement was based on copper for 100 of years with the Japanese. Yes. 
So of course, this Japanese company would like to take the rock, the soil, brought back to Japan. Over there, the rocks are processed to give final product. It may not only be copper, but there may be other elements. So we do not know the agreement because normally the government keep the agreement secret. So what people at the university and other institutions have studied, the element present in the bauxite from country to country, because there are many countries also produce bauxite. So this is from Indonesia, okay? Yeah. Next slide, you see, uh, about this bauxite. Uh, you see, this is in Malaysia. In Malaysia. Yeah, you can see, this is a palm oil plantation in Kuantan, you know, Kuantan, Pahang. Yes. You can see how they, they, they mine the bauxite and they carry the bauxite. It causes air pollution, you know. They cause a lot of problems, they cause water pollution. No, this is a piling up of the bauxite. So this bauxite is carried to the to jetty, to harbor where the ship, the Chinese ship is waiting. Yeah. So the customer yeah. is China, and China took the bauxite into to China, to the Tiangkok. Okay. Yeah. Over there is the process. I always give my opinion, why don't we process it in Malaysia? Why don't we process it in, in, in Indonesia? Okay, that is the decision government has to take. Okay, this is the bauxite. Yes. The major element is silicon, okay? Yeah. So let me study, let me study. The idea is so that the public know we are very rich with this rock, with this mineral. But other countries become more richer than us by buying the raw material from us. Okay. So yeah. that is my idea of introducing you to this kind of discussion. Okay, next slide. Let's see what they do with the bauxite. Okay. Yes, so bro. if we look at the minerals, the bauxite rock is rich in aluminium. Sorry, not silicon, aluminium. Uh, uh, the soluble mineral. You can see here, mineral yes. here, mineral there, mineral there, but it's rich in aluminium. So bauxite does not have specific composition, meaning from different country, their composition is different. But the major element is aluminium. aluminium. Yeah, aluminium, some quartz, some hematite. Hematite is iron. Yes. Magnetite is iron. That's why you have the color of iron. Okay? Yes. And aluminum are in the form of trihydroxyl, uh, trihydroxyl and oxide aluminum. So these are the chemis chemistry you can study this, the geology study. So very interesting this mineralogy aspect of bauxite. Bauxite. Yeah. But we ask ourselves as a chemist. How many of our chemists study bauxite? Not many. Because, <laughs> not many. The geology studied it because it has economic values. Okay. Yeah. So this is where our mistake. We learn chemistry from the book. <laughs> we don't learn from what we have. You know? Yeah. So if we know we have all this raw material, we have all this. Uh, our country is very rich so that we can study the detail and write a papers or write a book. And even good pictures doesn't come from Malaysia, Indonesia. It comes from foreign countries. Okay? Yes. Uh, so this is our, I think we become more knowledgeable. We should go into all kinds of activities. Okay? That is the mineral in bauxite. Next slide, we will see when they process the bauxite. Now we look at the bauxite. It is, a, as I mentioned, it is a sedimentary rock. 
some country they got gallium. So if the agreement only mention about bauxite and aluminium, if you find there is gallium, this is very valuable mineral. Yeah. So so it depends how uh, we negotiate in the contract agreement. So you can see there the biggest uh, producer of bauxite, Australia, China, Guania, Brazil, and Indonesia is somewhere here. Indonesia. Indonesia here. Yeah, 1 million 200,000 tons. 11,000. Yeah, very rich. 1 million Indonesia. and 200. Indonesia is very rich. Very rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know that. Uh, you know that. <laughs> I know so that. that mean the public, the people, the riot to enjoy more. Okay? Yes. So we opened up our mind as a chemist. We opened up not only in the laboratory, we should open up our mind. Yeah, this is a money making business. Chemists can go anywhere. You can go to the mining, you can go to the pharmacy. Okay? Yes. Chemists has a lot of can join any field. All right? All right. Okay, that's a book. Sorry. Next slide. Next slide. We see. Okay, this is the final product. Yes. So when you go aluminium, you process it, you come up with aluminium powder. All right? Very right. expensive. And from aluminum powder, you can make alloy, you can make metal, metal plate, you can make a metal plate for making aeroplane. Aeroplane, if you remember, the body is aluminum, very strong, very, very, very light. So aluminum, very valuable material. Now you can see from the rock, from the aluminum, and then you spread the elements. And finally, you get a aluminum powder of this size. All right? All can right. you make smaller than this size? Maybe this can. May be, <laughs> this may be 20 micron, 50 micron size. Yes. Well, with a nanotechnology, you can make it into nano size. Yes. Then you can nano particles of aluminum. Right. So that means it becomes smaller, becomes smaller, becomes smaller, leading to the atom. Uh, okay, you can see my point now. From the rock see now, to, the mineral, to the element, to powder macron size, to powder nano size, and then to atom, atomic size. Can you make atomic size? Okay? Yeah. So the, the, the thinking from big to small, 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 small. Or can you make atom, make assemble it into nano, into micron, bigger, 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 bigger. All right? All right. So that is the thinking. Okay. That is about aluminum from our own bauxite uh, rock, sedimentary rock, both Malaysia and Indonesia have these materials. Okay. Now let's look at the second mineral, very important mineral for Indonesia, the rich Indonesia. We go to the next slide. Okay, now you talk about iron. Iron. Because iron is number one mentioned in the Quran. It's a Quranic element. So there are many types of iron rock are found in the earth's surface. Okay. This is native iron. This is iron somehow being being changed, being metamorphic. You can see like rusting, iron rust, this iron mineral. This is beautiful, uh, look like a uh, cubic iron mineral. Uh, they call it pyrite. So people thought at one time this is gold. People rushing into the jungle <laughs> and collect the gold. Even if yes. they found that's not gold, iron, okay? Yeah. But talking about the gold is also very interesting. Because many gold in Sumatra and Kalimantan, the quantity may not be viable for mining. May not be viable for mining. So the people go and mine themselves using the cyanide acid and cause a lot of problems. So gold mine 
in Malaysia and also Indonesia a small scale by individuals or by group of people. Very interesting for the chemists to study uh, what cost, what is the result of that mining activity of gold mining in Indonesia. It caused environmental problem, it caused hazard. Obviously, chemists can study, yeah, okay? So okay. this is iron. 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 We go to the next one. The next one also in Indonesia, we will see this uh, element. Okay, next slide, we see. This is think, nickel iron. Uh, uh, this is another rock. It's combination of nickel and iron. iron. You, know, you know the color of the iron is typical iron. It's rusting color. Yes, right. <laughs> Like yeah, red, okay. <laughs> or an nah, orange red, yes. Red with iron, okay? Yeah. So when you have red, you know aluminum is colorless. So when your bauxite is color, is iron. So there are some yes. iron in the bauxite. So this is uh, iron, uh, this is nickel, and Indonesia is one of the richest country to produce nickel in the world. So Indonesia has bargaining power of nickel production in the world. If Indonesia stop the production of nickel, it will affect electronic industry, so many industry in the developed country. Yeah. So Pak yeah. Jokowi is playing, playing his politics to make Indonesia prosperous, to make Indonesia better. So, <laughs> so Indonesia is a rich country. That's the nickel iron. Let's see how Nickel mining in Indonesia. Next slide. Uh, this is how uh, nickel is mined or mining industry of nickel in Indonesia. It's not very difficult because it, it, it happened in the open space. So you just need a tractor to remove the rock, to remove the soil, carry to, you know, to the plant for processing or to the ship and export. I think now uh, Jokowi has already decided to build the processing plant yes. for the nickel. And then you sell the nickel at a better price than the soil, than the rock. Okay? Yeah. So mind, mind to you all, especially Indonesian, you are very rich, man. Very rich. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of uh, having yeah. mineral. Right yeah. now, nickel is uh, explored more and more. Yeah. The, uh, battery so resources, means, prof. Yeah, you have a good material for education. Either chemistry, geology, economy, you know? Yes. So they are all in Indonesia. Okay, next slide. Next slide, okay, you will see. So these are the end products of iron. Everybody knows this. Many people buy the iron bar. This is only one example, okay? Yeah. This is nickel. So you have nickel metal. I mean, what they do, they do smelting, they melt this nickel or iron and shape into bar, into rod. And everybody like this is gold, gold plate. Even gold dust also very expensive. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is very expensive. So, <laughs> you can make teaching of elements more interesting rather than from the book. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next slide. Okay, we see the next slide. Now, now we know about the elements. There are iron, silver. Gold, copper, they are Quranic, Quranic elements. And geology, chemists, whatever, whoever have studied rushing, rushing, they rush to study the element in the earth, in the rock, in the mineral. So now we have how many, Ernie? Must be nearly 200 elements. 118 okay. elements. Yeah, what well, the element. As I mentioned in the previous video, 
how can you group this element? So they make a grouping. Yes. At first, they group it based on similarity. Yes. And finally, they find they found that similarity in property in color is not good enough. There are overlapping properties, but they are different. So now with the technology, they have developed the final table called periodic table. So they have group. There are how many group altogether? Uh, 18. 14, 16, 17, how many? 18, 18 groups. 14, 17, 18. To this but group. not 18 okay. group. Uh, before that, yeah. uh, we divide to be A and B. We divide it into group. Yes. And into period three. Okay. Yeah, period second one, period three, and three, uh, 18 okay. groups. Yeah, so all these elements in group one, they are similar. Yes. There are many similarities. They are metallic. They are called alkaline metallic. They are in group two. They are similar. Okay. And then last time we called it group three. Okay, they have three A, three B. Now they change it. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. So this is the new IUPC nomenclature. Yes. Uh, naming the credit table. We don't use group one A, group one B anymore. Yeah. We call it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight away. Okay. Okay. So how how do they divide this into the group? So this was something we have to learn, but not immediately. But what is important is all these elements now are grouped yeah, and form a table called periodic tables. How they are formed, we need to learn about elements, we need to learn about atoms. Okay? okay because well. the, the periodic table is formed based on the atomic property. So now we have seen aluminum powder, micron size, aluminum maybe nano size, and mind you, nano size is 10 power 9 centimeter, meaning 0 0.00009 times. One centimeter is very, very small. So the atom must be more smaller than nano size. It's not easy to study. But people have managed to study, okay? okay so cool. now we have come out from rock, earth, mineral, elements, and how many elements? They are all in the periodic tables. The question is, we want to have an answer how this periodic table is formed, okay? Yes. In order to answer that question, we have to study about the atoms. So how the idea of atoms came about. So, okay, we know element now. We have uh, lithium, we have sodium, we have potassium, we have plumbum, we have calcium. And then the last, the last part of the table, we have the red one, the black one, they're all gases. Chlorine gas, bromine gas, you know, helium gas. They are very useful, helium land, you know. Xenon lamp, so very, very useful. Yes. Okay, so next slide. Okay, now, in order to explain the formation of the periodic table, we have to study what you call atoms. So we know, we have seen a silicon powder. You break it, you break it into micron size. You break it into nano size. Can you break it further? You can break. There is a limit you can break there. The element, there's a limit of size you can break. So if you think the other way around, from the smaller size, make it bigger, 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 bigger. Instead of bigger, small, 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 small. So from small, bigger, 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 we call it building up. Okay, we build it up. So uh, people have been trying to think 
uh, how this material is formed and that answer of how will explain the different behavior of element, okay? Yes. Different behavior element depend on the atoms in right. the element. Okay, then people have to think about the atom. The atom is very small, very difficult to think. So when you were at school, uh, junior school, we were taught about atom. The teacher taught us, follow this book, Holderness, written by Holderness. Maybe you know this book. Yeah. The atom is the smallest particle. That's what the first thing the book says. The smallest particle. You have to understand. You have to accept that. No argument. But yes. now we know. From the rock to the mineral to the powder. Powder becomes small, 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 small. Okay? Yes. Uh, so, until you cannot break it anymore, they call it that too. They call it atom. So, atom at that time called the smallest particle that make the elements. Okay. Okay? Yes. So now, I do not want student to think the way we thought before. So when the, our teacher taught us, oh, atom has electron moving around here in the middle nucleus, even at, at night at home, or you, if you stay in the boarding school, in the asrama, in the college, you start imagining, wow, electron moving here, moving here in the <laughs> So you just imagine, uh, and then it's a very hard imagination. So we have to think how these people got to give them brain and give them way to think about the smallest particle that make the element smallest particle that make the elements. So yes. when it comes to atom, I think people have thought about it. And uh, the first person came out with the concept of atom. Do you know who is the person? Thompson? Huh? Thompson? No. At school, you may learn about Dalton. Oh, Dalton yeah. <laughs> that, that one is at school. Okay. Yeah. But Dalton was not the first one who introduced the concept of atom. It was Rutherford. introduced by some, Rutherford, somebody I'm else. Sorry. Rutherford is later. Bohr. Rutherford is a radioactive experiment. Bohr? Before Dalton, there is another philosopher. Bohr, I think. 400 BC. 400 BC. Okay. Introduced the concept of atom. Okay. Yes. So how did the question now for the student, how did the idea, idea of atom came about? Okay. So this will be a special video that I will prepare for our next video. Thank okay, you what, so much, Prabhu Hari. What, uh, I try to I summarize what I discussed today. Okay. From the from the Earth formation, the Earth splitted into different continents. Yes. Into different countries. Yes. The geology has introduced plate tectonic theory. Okay. Yes. You know, due to the volcanic eruption, due to tsunami due to earth movement underground, the continent was formed from one piece of earth. So in the earth, we have rock. In the rock, we have mineral. In the mineral, we have elements. Now different elements have different atoms. So the idea of atoms came about to explain why different elements behave differently. Copper is different than silver. Silver is different than gold. Why? 
they use the concept of atom, the smallest particle that make the gold element, the smallest particle that make the silver element. Yes. That make element different. Okay. Yeah. So the concept of atom, I purposely make one video because we want to focus about the knowledge of the atom. Remember, atom is a concept about the smallest particle. So when we talk about particles, particle must have mass, particle must have size. How do you measure the mass of a nano? How do you measure the size of the nano? You can measure the size of the nano by using scanning electron microscope or transmission electron microscope. But what about the atomic size? How do you measure the size of the atomic scale? Okay, so that is a whole bunch of knowledge uh, achievement by human about the atomic, all right? Right. So I think for this one, the student, the docent have enough material for them to give a better lecture, better kulia to the student as well as the public. Uh, okay, and then, so next slide we will talk about uh, more about concept atom. Thank you so much, it's Prof. Subject, okay. All right, Annie. All right, so uh, 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 we need to stop question? here, right? Yeah. Stop slide, I mean, yeah. stop, sir. Yes. If you have, you have yeah. any question, you're welcome. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Buhari. This is a very nice talk about uh, element. About element. Uh, okay, about element. Sorry, I don't remember the title. Alquan, Earth, Rock, Mineral, Element, and Atom. So, Prof. already uh, explained about Earth, Rock, Mineral, Element, and then Atoms. Atom is the smallest particle, right? So they yeah, can like, form uh, yeah, elements. But, 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 but now it's not. But now it's not 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 smallest anymore. Not because smallest anymore. Atom, have, like, yeah, because in the in the atom we have electron. Okay. Yes. Electron particle. So that's what we will discuss in the next video. Okay. Okay. So what I want to know, um, actually, bro. This is very inspiring and then also give not only for public, not only for our student, but for me, uh, this is very understanding if, if mineral rocks in our environment, this is uh, formed from element and then from atom, atom from electron and so on. So Prof, uh, can you, uh, what is, I mean, uh, or not maybe what is the significant impact for us uh, should be learn or know about the element bro yeah, okay. how, how how we encourage uh, our student can uh, they prefer or I mean a desire to study about element how to encourage them okay uh, should be they love my element. thinking yeah my thinking is this I've shown you about the rock formation, yes. the earth in Indonesia, yes. in Malaysia. Yeah. This can be a good material for teaching, yes. for writing a book. So many, many books, when they describe chemistry, they describe straight away to the point. Yes. The subject. Yeah. Your element is this, atom is this, you know. But if we, we do some uh, homework, looking from our country as a whole, so you will find there are a lot of uh, first-hand materials. What I mean is, in Indonesia, you have many, many volcanoes. Yes. People know it explodes almost every year, small or big, you know? Yes. What are the elements come out from the explosion? You can take the sample, 
you can make the analysis. Yes. And in the book you written, these are the, the, the mineral. Yeah. From the rock. From, from the, the rock. gas. From volcano from explosion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then you, you can do SRF to identify the elements. X-ray fluorescence, yes. Yeah. Yes. You can do a neutron activation analysis. Yes. You have yes. a radioactive facility in, in Bantam. Yes. All right. Right. They may have the data. If you yeah. get the data from them, from the soil department, you can write the book. And then people will appreciate more. Well, in Indonesia, we have this element. We have this rock. Take the yes. photograph. Yes. We write a book. Okay. Okay. Maybe you call the book "The Rock, the Element of Indonesia for Chemistry." <laughs> okay. So uh, we depend so much on the book published by international publisher. We don't have much time to think uh, to write our own books based on our own materials that available in a very rich quantity in our country. So that is the challenge for the young generation to introduce something different in yes. teaching or chemistry at school, okay? Yes. <laughs> you got my it's point, It's a very huh? good idea. I get, I get your point. Um, it's not easy to do. Me, <laughs> it's not easy to early. start. But <laughs> it's very amazing. It's very interesting. Uh, how to introduce our element, mm -hmm. our rock, our mineral to our students. Yeah. Hopefully you know, this... Honey, yes. You know, I need a comment from the student. Yes. When I give lectures, uh -huh. I always go to the lecture room. Yeah. Only bringing the chalk. <laughs> no, no, no file. <laughs> I seldom use file. I just see around, think around, and I teach the class. And i sorry, I don't remember what I taught them. I <laughs> always ask, what did I teach you last, last, last lecture? <laughs> <laughs> so that most of my students say, from worry lectures, that I give them notes. Sometimes I give them notes, very important, very important facts. I yes. give them notes. But when I teach, I don't carry any notes. I don't carry any files. Okay. And some lecturers didn't believe it. So they enter secretly into the lecture theater and listen to what I taught to the student. <laughs> so the student, my, my question is very simple. Yeah. What is this? What is that? What do you think about it? Uh, can you think about it? And the student don't like this kind of question. Yeah. Because they expect something from the north, from the book. You they know? should be thinking. <laughs> they should yeah. be thinking. So that's why they, course, they they doesn't like yeah, us like that. When, <laughs> yeah, when you yeah, make question, yeah. uh -huh. fifty question of fifty percent of the question uh -huh. come from the north. Okay. Okay. But 50 percent of the question come from the ability of the student. Yes. To analyze the question. Analyze to find. Yeah. The and then this actually, I gave, I gave the answer. I gave the answer uh -huh. in the questions. Okay, but they didn't. But know. they didn't see. It, but oh, they, they didn't, didn't see, see it. the answer. answer <laughs> yes, yes. Because they don't think. Yeah. You want our students to think, okay? Yeah. So, yeah. but anyway, not many students fail my course because. Well, I, as I told, I set up 50% from the notes. 50% 50 from the team. <laughs> For them to pass, not difficult. Okay. For them to be excellent, uh -huh. they need more effort, more thinking. Okay? Yes. So that, that's what I did for 43 years as a docent. So as first year teaching, yes, I bring file notes. After five years, no more. Okay, no more. So it's a direct, uh, direct discussion, direct interaction with the students. Okay, anything, okay. anything else? Okay. Uh, thank you, Rob. I think for our conversation today is enough since it is uh, so brilliant, I think, 
from your uh, yeah. side, <laughs> from your mind, is very interesting. Very, uh, it is very brilliant. Hopefully, public or our student can understand more about element, and then this is can inspire you, all the people. I mean, at public and our students. So thank you so much, Pro Bohari. Uh, okay, already you share your knowledge, your experience your uh, everything i think uh, for us with anikusrini.com thank you so much prof hari see you in the next video prof thank you uh, stay okay, healthy stay safe prof hari thank you thank you very much see you next video bye bye thank you. bye bye